Welcome along to the final part of our video series where we are creating a Glacier Race game in Scratch. What we've got so far is our two little cars racing through the game. They can collect gems and get scores. We've got a countdown timer that counts down from 20 seconds. Um, we can have collisions with snowballs or the edge of the track. We can knock each other out of the way. Our game's looking really good. Okay. What we need to do now is just put the final finishing touches on it. Okay. So there's an idea of how it's looking so far. The finishing touches that I want to put in this game is basically a race official. And what the race official is going to do, he's going to appear at the start of the game, and it's going to be a penguin, which suits our wintry kind of theme. And the penguin's going to ask for the player's names, so he knows who's racing against each other. He's going to ask for the red player's name and the blue player's name. Okay, once he's got your names, he'll start the race and disappear. He will reappear again at the end of the race to tell you who the winner is, or whether or not it's been a draw. Okay, so let's get started by making a new sprite. And in the animals category, we've got two penguins to pick from. So you can either choose penguin one or penguin two. Penguin two will do me for this one. He comes out quite large, but that's good. That's what we want him to look like. And just leave him sitting in the center there. We're going to move him with the setup code shortly into his actual position. Now once you've got him in, we're going to go across to the data tab here. We just need to make a few variables before we get started on this game. So make a variable up. One's going to be called red info. Click OK. Another one's going to be called red name. Click OK. Then we're going to do the same for the blue. So blue info will be another variable. And we'll make one final variable called blue name. Click OK. So you can see we've got these four different um Variables now created and they're appearing on our page. You can actually hide them, so we want to get rid of blue name, blue info, red info, red name. Okay, we don't want them on our page Oops. just yet. Oh, now I accidentally just moved my map. I don't think that'll matter. No, that's fine. Okay, so now that we've got those variables created, we can start doing the script for our game. Uh, so our race for our race official sorry so i'm actually clicked on the penguin and what we're going to do is in our events we're going to do the setup code first of all and get him set up into his position okay so when i receive setup what we're going to do is make sure that our variables of red info and blue info are hidden i know i've hidden them already over there but we'll just do that again so red info is hidden and hide variable blue info Okay, making sure they're both hidden. Next thing we're going to do is move our penguin into position, which is going to be over here near the bottom left of the page. Okay, so just change the X and Y values. What I want the X to be is minus 180 and the Y value minus 30. And when I press the green flag, you'll see that that puts him in his start position on the left-hand side of the screen. Next thing I want to do is make sure that he's in front of everything. Okay, yeah, we want our penguin on top of stuff, and we also want to show him, because we are going to hide him later on. Each time we start our game, we do want him to show up, though. Now, the first thing we want our race official to do is ask the players for their names. So in the Sensing tab here, you've got an option to ask a question. So bring out the Ask, What's Your Name? We might leave What's Your Name there, but before that, what we're going to put in is Red Driver. And put a dash. Your controls are, and just tell them their controls, so W-A-S-D, what's your name? And then it waits. It waits for a response from the user. Okay, It won't continue until they get that person's name. And in the data, what we're going to do next is we're going to set the red driver's name, or set red name, to whatever their answer is. So in sensing, you've got an option here to put in the answer. Okay, so we set the red player's name to whatever the answer is to the question above. Okay, we want to do the same for the blue driver now. So we can just duplicate that two sec those two sections of code and just slightly tweak it. So it now says blue driver. Your controls are. We'll change WASD to the arrow keys. Let me get my spelling right. Then I'll ask what their name is, and they'll wait for a response. Okay, and you can see here in the example, if I just make it full screen, a box comes up at the bottom of the page asking for their name, where they can type in the name. Okay, so I'll just stop that for a sec. Now remember, we need to set the blue driver's name to blue name. Okay, so now we've got our player's names set in our game. 
Once we've got the player's name set, we'll get our little penguin to start the race. So simply go to looks and ring out the first option that says say hello for two seconds and change hello to go. So he says go for two seconds. And we hide him. Okay, you want him to disappear off our page after that two seconds. Then back in data, we hid these variables be variables before that said red info and blue info. Once our penguin disappears, we can bring these bad boys back and make them show up on our page. Okay, so we're going to bring out the show variable red info. I'll just duplicate that and I'll show the variable blue info. So that's going to show uh, basically our players' names and how many gems they've collected. Okay, we haven't coded it up completely yet, but that's what that variable is going to do. And at the end, just in sensing there, just reset the timer. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to work on this red info and blue info. Okay, when they show up, as I said before, we want the name of the player to appear and how many gems they've collected, all in the one little box. Okay, at the moment it says red card gems and blue card gems. We're going to scrap these in a moment and we're going to replace it with the red info and blue info. Okay, so in events what we're going to do is we're going to bring out when I receive calculate. Okay, we're going to calculate how many gems have been collected. So we need to go to data and we bring out the set, not blue name, we're going to set red info to. And what we're going to put in, I'm going to put in some operators. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out the join. We're going to join together our name and how many gems we've collected. Okay, so in data, we need to bring out the red name, the first option. So we're going to join the player's red name with the number of gems they've collected. And to do that, we're going to have to bring out one more operator called join. And in this first box, what I'm going to do is delete the word hello and put a space. Make sure you put a space first and write gems with a colon and then put another space. You want a space on either side of the word gems. Okay, so it puts in the person's name first, then a space, then the word gems, and then another space. And we need to work out how many gems the red car's collected. So back in data here, we've got a variable that's called red car gems. I'm going to drag that and put it on top of the word world just to replace that. So now our red information bar, or our red player's information bar, is going to have their name as well as how many gems they've collected. And it's basically the same for the blue player. So just duplicate that code by right-clicking on it and duplicating it. It's just tweaking it so it says blue info. So we're going to set the blue info. We'll get rid of red name and bring in blue name. So you put the blue player's name in. We join it with the word gems, and we don't want red card gems. We want blue card gems in the end there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Might be worth testing to see what happens when we do that. So if we go full screen, we get our guy asking for the red player's name. So that's Bob. Then he asks for the blue driver's name. So we type in down the bottom Sue. And he says go. He'll disappear. And you can see our info bars appear with Bob's gems and Sue's gems. Okay, and you can see that they're going up. Now, if I stop that, you can see it doesn't look very good at the moment because it still has the variable name red info and blue info at the start. We can fix that in a moment. And we can scrap this top section now that says red car gems and blue car gems because those values are now appearing down here. Okay, so make your screen smaller again. These top two here, red car gems. I think you can just uncheck the box over the side here and blue car gems. Uncheck them. We don't need them. And I want you to move red info and blue info at the top. Now to get rid of the red info and blue info just here, just right click on them and change them to a large readout. The large readout will just display, let's make it a bit bigger, the player's name. So we've got the player's name in the start here. We've got the word gems and how many gems they've collected. Okay, so that looks a lot better now. All right, so we'll leave that there. Now, what we have to do when the game finishes is display the winner. Okay, so we're going to go to events here. And we're going to bring out another broadcasted message. So when I receive game over, okay, it means it's the end of the game. What we're going to do is we're going to show the penguin again. So bring him back onto our screen. 
And we're going to play a new sound. Okay, we'll go to our sound library first, and we're just going to bring in a new sound. We're looking for the gong. Okay, there's the gong there. I'll just turn him up so you can have a listen. Okay, so that's the gong. Double click on that, and you'll see the gong comes into our sound library. You can scrap pop there if you want. And basically, when the game is over, we want to play that gong sound. Okay, so our penguin will show up, and the gong sound is going to appear. Okay, we want our penguin to go to the middle of the page. So the middle of the page is x0 and y equal to 0. That throws him in the middle. And we want to make sure that he's on top of all the cars and everything else. So in your looks tab, make sure he is in front. So go to front. Now we just need to do the calculations to work out who has the most number of gems. So in control, we're looking for an if-then-else statement. Okay, first thing we're going to look for in the operators is the greater than symbol and put it between the if and the then. So it's if red card gems is greater than the blue card gems. And obviously the red car is going to be the winner. So in looks, so I won't do that, I'll just bring out say. So it says say hello, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the operators and we're going to join together a couple of things. So we're going to say, join the player's name. So it's the red car that's winning in this case. So the red player's name. Put a space and write wins with an exclamation mark at the end. Okay, so if the red car has more gems than the blue car, then we're going to say the player's name, whoever's in the red car, wins. Make sure you've got that space before the word wins. So it puts in a space between the name and the word wins. Now, else means what else happens if the red card doesn't have more gems than the blue car. Okay, so that's an easy one. We'll just go back to control here. We're going to do another if-then-else, though, inside of here. Okay, so this time, in our operators, we're looking for the less-than symbol. Put it in. So it's if the red card gems is less than the blue card gems, then... We're going to say that the blue name wins. All right, so in operators, let's join together a couple of things like we did before. We need to say something first, my bad. So we'll say, join together. We want to put the blue car's name in here. Okay, so look for blue name. Put it in first. Now in the second box where it says, well, delete that and just put a space and write wins. Again, make sure you put a space before the word wins. Alright, so if the red car has less gems now than the blue car, whoops, then we're going to say that the blue player wins. Now, if neither of these scenarios have occurred, it means we've got a draw. It means that the blue gems and the red gems are the same amount. So in this else option here, what else is going to happen? Well, we're just going to say in our looks here, Say so it's a draw. And then try again after it. Okay. So a little bit confusing there, but if you do break it down, it's going to start to make sense. If the red car has more gems than the blue car, then the red player wins. If the red car has less gems than the blue car, then the blue car wins. If anything else happens, then it must be a draw. Okay, so we just tell the game that it's a draw. All right, so that's all well and good. The last thing I want to add in now is a little bit of background music. Okay, and the way we do that is we get off the penguin. So I might just rename that penguin sprite while I'm at it. Instead of calling him penguin 2, just call him penguin. Sounds a bit better. Just go back to the game loop sprite for a moment so we can put in some background music and then we should be finished. So what we're going to do is go to events and we're going to bring out its own script here. So when the green flag is clicked, we want to play some music. So in sounds here, actually we need to go to sounds library first of all, and we need to go and pick ourselves a music loop. Okay, the one I'm looking for is dance around. You can choose whichever one you want, but dance around sounds good to me. If you want to have a listen to it. Sounds pretty fun. So what I'm going to do now, remember to bring the second play sound in so it's the play sound until done 
and we want to play sound dance around it until it's done. When it's done, we just loop it. Okay, so we need to bring out a forever loop and wrap that around it and then attach it to when the green flag is clicked. Okay, so that's easy enough. So when the green flag is clicked, we're forever going to play the dance around music. Okay, it only lasts a few seconds, so as soon as it's done, it just loops back and starts again. Alright, so I'm hoping that is it and we haven't got any errors in our game. I'm going to head over here to full screen and we're going to give this a proper run. Okay, we've got our background music. Just turn that down so it doesn't distract us. Red driver, what's your name? Let's put Bob back in. Blue driver, what's your name? We'll put in Sue. He says go for two seconds and we're away. Okay, the cars can nudge each other, they can collect gems. All the sounds are working. I can turn it up a little bit. Let's try and make this game run out. I'll try and collect as few gems as possible. Only got a few seconds left. It's a bit hard to hear that pop for the last 10 seconds because that music's so loud, but it is actually occurring. There we go, our game stops. It's broadcast the message to say it's game over. Sue had the most gems, so she wins. And that's it. So I'll stop that, go back to here, make sure you save that up and you've got a working game. If you want to try and tweak things a little bit, maybe draw a different background. Maybe you could be in the desert rather than the snow. Okay, it's pretty easy to change that. You could change the colour and the look of your cars. You could change a race official. You can do all sorts of things. Okay, so a bit of fun just tweaking your, your game if you finished a little bit early. Okay.